Here's a story from Grandpa for my three favorite little girls, Emma, Ayla, and Audrey. A while back, I read several stories from American folklore, Paul Bunyan, Calamity Jane, and Johnny Appleseed. At the time, we discussed that folk tales are stories that usually weren't written down in the beginning, but were told from one person to another until everyone knew them. Sometimes they were based on real people, and sometimes they weren't. And often they became exaggerated as the stories were passed along. Today I'm going to read you a folktale from China. Chinese folktales are exciting because they often involve dragons. And who doesn't like dragon stories? Now, I'll warn you that the main character's name is spelled S-I-M-A and is pronounced differently in different languages, such as Sima, Sima, Shima, Sima, and Sima. For our story today, I'm going to use Sima, but the other ways of pronouncing the name are just as good depending on where you're from. Maybe Emma or Audrey will correct me. Here's today's story, Little Sima and the Giant Bowl. A Chinese folk tale adapted by Zhi Ku, illustrated by Lin Wang. Legend has it that Little Sima was a lucky child he lived in a beautiful village on the banks of a great river. He had all the love, friendship, and fun a boy could wish for. As a young child, little Sima read many books and knew many stories. He liked to watch dragons weave clouds in the sky, and he liked to hear stories about his ancestors. Little Sima especially liked hearing about the life of his great-great-grandfather. Great-great-grandfather Sima had a happy life just as little Sima had. He lived in the same beautiful village, just like little Sima. Great-great-grandfather loved to watch a dragon weave clouds in the sky. The great dragon took threads of white dew and wove clouds of different patterns. Sometimes rain would fall from these clouds, and sometimes it would be snow. But one winter day, the great dragon that wove clouds for the village grew tired of his job. He turned his back on his duty. Chinese dragons had to live where there was plenty of water in clouds or in rivers or lakes. So the dragon came down from the skies to live in the river that ran past the village. He became known as the black dragon to all who lived in the village. Because no one was weaving clouds in the village sky, the village had no rain. The earth became dry, the river grew shallow. The shallow water in the river annoyed the black dragon. In anger, he rose from the river to breathe out fire every year. The fire burned houses and plants near the river. It charred the trees. It turned the once green riverbanks into a wasteland. Worst of all, after the dragon breathed out fire, he would become exhausted. So he would swallow a whole well of water to regain his strength. Soon, all the wells in the village were dry. The village became poorer and bleaker each year. For fear of the black dragon, the families kept all their doors bolted. The streets became empty. No laughter was heard. No children played outside. Without rain, the crops could not grow. The animals starved. Food and drinking water became scarce. The whole village suffered these hardships for 100 years. Yet the Simas remained hardworking, kind, and hopeful for a better life. One hundred years after the black dragon left the skies, little Sima was born. The family embraced their baby child with joy and sorrow. How would he survive? One day at dusk, an old man dressed in rags came to beg at the Sima's door. He was so old and fragile that he had to lean on a stick. Could he survive the chill of the night on the street? Little Sima's parents were kind people, so they invited the old man into their house. They shared their meager supper of porridge with him. Porridge was the only food they had eaten for a month. After supper, little Sima's father put up a bed so the old man could rest for the night. When little Sima's parents woke up the next morning, they found the old man meditating on a straw mat. He looked stronger after a night's sleep. He thanked the Sima's for saving his life the life of an old beggar, as he said. He told them, Before I leave this world, I want to give you my only earthly possession. It is a fish gong. It will turn your luck around and make your family prosper. Then he warned, 
You must take good care of this gong. Its magic power will end if it is broken. Little Seema's parents listened to their guest in bewilderment. Before they could thank him for the gift, the old man vanished into the morning dew. Little Seema's parents realized that their guest was a wizard in disguise. They walked outside. There they found a giant porcelain bowl standing in the courtyard under their old linden tree. It was an amazing gong, glazed with nine blue dragons around the outside. Inside it was blazed with beautiful goldfish. Little Seema's parents knew that this was the gift of the great wizard. They gathered in front of the gong. They thanked their mysterious guests for this wonderful gift. At noon that day, the villagers saw nine blue dragons appear in the sky. The dragons began to weave clouds above the village. Lightning pierced the sky. Thunder crashed. A storm had come to Sima's village for the first time in 100 years. It rained the whole afternoon, the whole evening, and the whole night. The villagers came out of their homes. They danced and laughed in the rain. Their hearts were filled with joy. From then on, the mindful blue dragon saw to it that Sima's village had enough rain. Trees, flowers, and grass began to cover the land. Clear water filled the wells and the river. Children played outside. The village was full of life again. The unfaithful black dragon retreated to the deepest part of the river in disgust. In eight years, the Sima family became prosperous again. They were so grateful for the great wizard that they treasured the gong above everything else. To adorn the gong, they filled it with the most beautiful goldfish. They planted firs and flowers nearby. Wealthy as they were, the Simas were still kind, hardworking, and good. They hoped their little boy would grow up to be brave and clever young man. Little Sima never disappointed his parents. He studied hard and was always obedient and respectful. He knew that it was a great wizard who had brought about his family's wealth and comfort. He loved sitting under the linden tree to read or to admire the gong. Sometimes he would imagine that the great wizard was looking down from the heavens to watch over him and his family. When the weather was nice, little Sima played outside with his friends. One day, a group of children came to play with little Sima in his family's courtyard. The children talked about the gong. They wanted to measure how fat it was. Five boys stretched out their arms to go around it. What a big, beautiful gong, the children exclaimed. They wanted to see the goldfish, but they couldn't. The gong was too tall. I've got a way, said one of the youngest boys. He climbed the linden tree. He sat on a branch above the gong. I can see the goldfish, he shouted to his friends. Barely a second after the words had left his mouth, the branch broke. Splash! The boy had fallen into the giant gong. The children were startled. Then they panicked. The boy would certainly drown if they did not do anything, but they did not know what to do. Help, help, the children shouted, but little Seema's parents were not home. No one could hear them. Some children ran out of the courtyard to look for other grown-ups. Little Seema did not call or run. He was calm. He knew that he had to think fast to save his friend's life. He took a big stone from a flower bed, but he hesitated. Should he be disrespectful of the great wizard? Would his parents blame him for breaking this treasure? Little Seema had no more time to think. His friend was gasping out words for help. He lifted the stone and smashed it hard against the gong. The gong did not break, but little Seema felt an awful pain himself. His heart was pounding fast. Then he smashed the stone against the gong again even harder. The gong began to crack. At the third stroke, the gong broke. Water poured out. Little Seema's friend was saved. Just then, Little Seema's parents returned home. His mother rushed into the courtyard. Little Seema was afraid that she would be angry with him for breaking the family's treasure. Before he could explain, his mother said, My son, you did the right thing. She patted Little Seema on the back. Remember, a life is always far more precious than anything else, she said. For months, the villagers waited to see if the black dragon would return, but there was no sign of him. Then, on a clear day, they saw the nine blue dragons come out of the sky again. They began to weave rain clouds. 
Lightning pierced the sky. Thunder crashed. Rain began to fall. Little Seema and his mother ran into the courtyard to see the gong. They found the cracks in it were gone. It was as beautiful as it had ever been. So at the end here, there's a little discussion about a real person named Seema who lived about a thousand years ago in China. And it tells about his story and how the folktale came about. I won't read it all to you here, but if you're interested, you can read it or ask your parent to read it to you. Then they have a little glossary of words that were used in the story. I think I will read those to you. Let's take a moment. The word ancestors means members of a person's family who lived long ago. Bewilderment means confusion. A courtyard is an outdoor space surrounded by walls. Dew is water droplets. Fur is a type of evergreen tree. Fragile is something easily broken. Hardship is something that causes suffering. Hesitate means to pause or delay for a moment. Gong, pronounced gong, is a porcelain bowl. Meager means not enough. Meditate is to focus one's thoughts. Porcelain is a type of fine pottery, also called china. Porridge is a soft food made of boiled grains like oatmeal or grits. Precious is something of great value. Prosperous means marked by success. Scarce means hard to find. And well is a hole in the ground that is a source of fresh water. And now that is the end of the story. So do you think dragons really existed in China a long time ago? They may not have, but they sure make for a good story, don't they? Little Sima had some hard decisions to make in this story, but he decided that saving his friend's life was more important than getting into trouble for breaking something valuable. And he was right. Always remember that Grandpa loves you, even if you ever get in trouble for doing the right thing. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.